Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The country's union leaders announced plans to unite. Trouble outside the Head Knowles Distribution Center. National exam results take a nosedive. news is brought to you by a Happy Halloween and welcome to our news. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Officials from the country's two umbrella unions announced plans to merge in a bid to fight what they call increasing bad blood between the union and the government. The announcement comes as several unions say they are far from settling ongoing disputes with the Minnesota administration. Jasmine Brown reports. Those union leaders did not hold back today as they say they are simply fed up and for that reason they insist they have to unite. Because we are fragmented or because they believe the perception of that we are fragmented, um, you're not going to get anything while you're fragmented. We need to merge in order to achieve our, get to reach our goal posts. According to Maynard, the idea for the National Congress of Trade Unions and Trade Union Congress to merge came about as industrial issues continue to spiral out of control with no resolution in sight. Maynard admitted the merger will not happen overnight as the conclave is just the first step to getting the process started. He says he expects the merger will be completed by mid-2020. We start today to, to do it and, and my hope is in the next three to six months, it, it'll, it'll be done. I mean, we have stuff to work out internally on both sides, and we just need to do it. Meantime, heads of various unions with outstanding issues commended the move to unite, saying there is strength in numbers. President of the Bahamas Utilities, Services and Allied Workers Union, Dwayne Woods, says the unions are all fed up with having unresolved matters drag on. The members are egotistically awaiting to package, to break down this door. They'll break down the door on the frame of the door. Co-chair of the National Labor Conclave, Cassandra Cartwright-Lewis, says at the end of the day, they want to send a strong message. We will be the visit of ours, traveling down, taking them down the yellow brick, the road. Yellow brick road and help them find their hearts. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. A tense situation outside Head Knowles Distribution Center today as scores of Hurricane Dorian evacuees sought to get their hands on basic necessities. The crowd turned rowdy after they discovered their hours-long wait was in vain. I, I don't like this garbage. This is a bunch of foolishness. Tempers flared outside Head Knowles' Gladstone Road Distribution Center today as Hurricane Dorian evacuees lined up in hopes of getting supplies donated for relief. I diabetic. I think I take shot twice a day and pills. And they're doing bad because I've been here from this morning and I ain't getting nothing yet. I don't want a card, the ticket, the number, whatever. Because I've been here too long. I'm 80 year old. This elderly woman from Abaco now lives with her son in Nassau. She waited for hours outside the gate to get supplies, only to be told to come back. Her daughter, Shamika Bassett, said she had been waiting in line for three hours when we spoke with her. I think it's wrong to the people, to Abaco people, Freeport people. And you get Nass um, Nassau people coming here taking our stuff, they talking their stuff, giving them to who they want, give them to. I think it's wrong. It's, it's horrible. It's wrong. And you see what now I have? Three, one, three fifty-two. Come on. Once you got in the gate, there was a shorter line at the door with a sign that has a list of rules. Security and police officers were stationed at the gate to help control the lines. But for the many people who waited for hours, some before sunrise, the situation was far from pleasant. And I've been here after the storm. I've been wake up from, from 3.30 with my two children. Come out here, and I still out here. All of us is one. All of us is one. You know what I'm saying? So if folks been here early, make sure I serve these people first because everybody in the same situation. We made our way inside where we saw Head Knowles co-founder Gina Knowles seated at a desk helping evacuees. We were told by an assistant that no one would be able to speak with us today and that we should leave. Head Knowles has assisted with disaster relief efforts in recent years. Retired educator Leroy Thompson, who had to evacuate with his family of six, says he just wants to get something. I mean, I thank um, Head Knowles for what they're doing, right? 
but I, I, my point is that I want to know what the government is doing, what the government of the Bahamas. I'm not con I'm interested in head nose because everything that I see happening since I came from Abaco two months ago is foreign, donated. What is the government of the Bahamas doing for the people of Abaco, who they evacuated here over two months ago, gave them $100 from social service, $50 from the Red Cross, and said the $100 is a one-time thing? What can that do for a family of six or a family of 10? National exam results have worsened this year compared to the year before. However, the Ministry of Education insisted that the exam is designed to show what students know, understand, and can do after having completed a prescribed course of study. It noted that the BGCSE is an indication of a student's achievement and potential rather than the sum of their total worth. Jasmine Brown reports. The results showed that the 2019 results worsened when compared to the previous year. Fewer students sat the BGCSE exams this year. 6,453 students were registered to take the exams. That's down 3.89 percent when compared to 2018. And that's not the only thing that was down. There was a decrease in the number of students who achieved a grade of C or above in core subjects in 2019 compared to 2018. 484 students received at least a C grade in those subjects this year. This represents a 1.22 percent decrease when compared to the 490 students who achieved a C grade or better last year. In 2015, there were 570 students who achieved at least a grade of C in these core subjects. 574 students scored this in 2016 and 521 in 2017. Additionally, fewer students achieved a C in at least five subjects this year. The 760 students who got a C or above in five subjects represent a 5.71 percent decrease when compared to the 806 students who achieved this in 2018. As it relates to BJC results, 11,137 students sat those examinations this year compared to the 11,828 students who took the exams in 2018. In 2019, there were 1,267 students who achieved at least a grade of C in math Math, English and science. That's a 18.36 percent decrease when compared to 2018. The results also show that 1,501 students achieved at least a grade of C in five subjects. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. A man charged with murder and the death of a woman told a magistrate that he tried to commit suicide. Jared Higgs has more. 29-year-old Sean Rackley was charged with a single count of murder in relation to the October 3rd killing of 22-year-old Therese Burroughs, who was found dead on Vispin Road off Emanuel Way. After having the charges read to him before a nearly empty courtroom, Rackley told Magistrate Andrew Forbes that he drank bleach and wanted to be remanded to the Sandilands Rehabilitation Centre. The shocking courtroom declaration was made after the Flamingo Gardens resident stated that he wanted to explain his state of mind and the circumstances he is in. He told the court that he wanted it known that he had tried to commit suicide and his throat and stomach were burning after drinking bleach. When asked to be remanded to the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center, Forbes advised the 29-year-old that he wouldn't be able to fulfill the request as Sandilands does not have the facility to house him. Rackley then asked, what about my safety? To which Forbes replied that the situation would be explained to the Commissioner of Corrections. The accused pressed the magistrate on the decision not to send him to SRC, prompting Forbes to explain that doctors from Sandilands attend the prison and he will have a psychiatric evaluation performed there. He was not represented by an attorney and is not eligible to apply for bail in the magistrate's court. He was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections until December 17th when he will be served with voluntary bill of indictment paperwork. He was advised of his right to apply for bail in the Supreme Court. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. Still to come, Rev signs a landmark deal with the Hallmark Channel. Plus, business in a box officially launched. Stay tuned.